Black Magic Tim. You may have heard the name, but do you know the history behind this underground film icon? About to get this party started. It all started with music videos. Um, 16 millimeter Bolex. There were very few film shooters in the area, and there was no such thing as video, except for VHS. So after I did the video, it feels just kept rolling in. He's been instrumental in the success of many productions, starting his own film company while still in film school in the mid-90s. The DC-based film company originally focused on producing music videos for a variety of artists. Black Magic Cinema Works was the name of our company. It was four of us. And uh, we were known as, you know, pioneers in, in everything we did as far as action to sci-fi. So as our name grew, uh, I would call places and people would be like, uh, who is this? And I'd say, it's, it's Tim, um, calling about shooting your film. And they'd say, Tim who? And I'd say, Tim, from Black Magic Filmworks? And they'd go, oh, Black Magic Tim. Because I'm a magician. I'm a visual artist. I create illusions on screen. Tim quickly moved on to working on nationally recognized videos, like DC's own Rugged and New York's Akinelli. He even assisted in lighting Nonchalant's 5 o'clock in the morning music video. But Tim had a side passion, making action sci-fi films. The award-winning film garnered the attention of the world-renowned Pettis Brothers. We had a meeting with Ted Pettis and world-renowned crime novelist George Pelicanos because they saw our film and they loved it. They regarded us as the next Coen brothers and they wanted to turn our short film into a feature. Max Ryder is plunged into a world of violence and mayhem in his attempt to deliver a package. But we turned down the deal because we didn't think the six-figure budget that they were going to give us was going to be adequate to do the type of film that we wanted to do. If I could only turn back the hands of time, I would say, Yes! Despite the loss of the feature deal, Tim and his colleagues moved into production of another sci-fi film. Sci-fi, action kind of film, more like drama. I was the co-producer and the production designer for the film. You know, props, set, design, special effects. That was my department. This also was my first attempt at trying pyrotechnics. This is my world. I brought it up. It was more drama based and just didn't have the same action and punch as uh, Apple Crumb Panic did. Tim later moved on to try his hand at electronic press kits, a staple for music artists to get first recognition. Naughty by Nature's Icons EPK and R&B superstar Tank were some of the first, as well as DC's own Kimberly Scott. In 2001, Tim embarked on a new endeavor. Just a minute, going to South Beach, Miami. It was called The Adventures of Dennis the Menace, South Beach. Dennis was one of the most bold, charismatic dudes I had ever met. South Beach has It was a really small crew. It was pretty much me, the executive producer, Dennis, and then the bodyguard, and of course the camera. And we shot down to South Beach and we filmed this documentary. This brother gonna have us locked up down South Beach. I had no idea that anyone would even be interested in picking the film up. But when we were done, uh, Derek, the executive producer, took the film to Image Entertainment, which was a big distribution company for DVDs and Blu-rays at the time. And uh, they loved the film and they picked it up. But then disaster struck. It was a day I'll never forget. I, uh, I had talked to Derek, and he had said that uh, you know, the paperwork was done. It was a wrap. Um, they were going to sign the contract the next day, which would have locked the film in for a distribution deal. And we would have recouped you know, a lot of money. And um, the next day, he was dead. Contracts never got finally signed, and the deal just sat on the shelf. That's where it's been ever since. 
These streets is where I'm from Just get that niggas missing Always into that sick shit Representing the district Yeah, that music video was huge It was a huge project I mean, we're talking Morgan Freeman Steph Lover uh, Queen Pen Variety of other characters It was great From that perspective Once again The dream turned into a nightmare uh, Let's see Fights, uh, guns, tens of thousands of dollars in suitcases. I, I can't say that it was one of my favorite projects. In fact, it even made me really realize that I'd still want to do music videos because it was chaos. Drama. But it got done. Tim then embarked into a new emerging market called Digital Video. I did a bunch of DV music videos, but the quality of DV just wasn't there, and uh, neither were the budgets. There was still lighting issues. You still had to light it right. You couldn't bring all these high-powered lights like you did for uh, film production. You had to minimize the lights. You had to rethink how you light things, and, and certain things were more acceptable in lighting, uh, you know, like flicker rates. You know, you didn't have the same problems as you had with film. So it made production a lot simpler and a lot cheaper. But it also brought down the production quality. I did commercials, I did EPKs, I did films, but you know, just wasn't the same environment. You know, I really missed film because film was just a level of professionalism that, you know, can't be matched. That's when Tim landed the Vote New Jersey commercial campaign. Finally, yes, film again. You know, um, Naughty by Nature, Jada Kiss, you know, Ben Rock, my buddy Shiloh, who was the director of these commercials. He, he loved the way I edited. He used to call me uh, Edward Scissorhands or Timmy Scissorhands or, you know, something of that concept. And uh, he wanted me to cut all of his works. Rolls the ball the same way he controls his vote. I've seen him stepping back and sizing up the candidate. And then BAM! He shakes and bakes while cutting through those who aren't qualified to hold such positions and titles. And what happens next? Yes! When I turned around and, and edited these commercials, uh, these Vote New Jersey commercials for him, that turned into something great because the uh, one vote commercial with Kenny Anderson uh, ended up being nominated for an Emmy. And after that, Tim started getting demands for other commercials. I got introduced to J-pop, which is uh, a new genre of Japanese pop music. Studio album, Into the Future. Featuring Unicorn Table, is at the top or one of the top groups on that list and that spawned off into doing the music video for the group. Music videos just weren't fun anymore. I mean the budgets weren't there to be creative. Uh, you got the big cats doing the super high you know half million dollar videos and you got the people doing two thousand three thousand dollar videos and the creativity is lost because it's, it's what can you do really for two thousand dollars because you have no props you have no sets you can really buy you can't hire real people so you know low budget music videos just wasn't my thing I, I had to get out of it I wanted to get back into bigger things so what was I going to do later that year Tim did two workout DVDs with one garnering a lot of attention. These are just some of the DVD workout DVDs that we did that, you know, did pretty well. And uh, Steve Hayes' DVD really did really well and propelled his uh, career as a, as a fitness instructor. But I was uh, starting to get the bug again, the creative bug, the make a movie bug, you know, the don't spend your own money to make your own movie type bug. And, um, I tried to think of a way I could do it as cheaply as possible with the, all the equipment I had because I had amassed so much equipment from all the films and videos. I said, how can I take HD? How can I take green screen? How can I take the props and the skills and animation that I have and create a film that I could do in-house, you know, with a, with a, a, a meager budget? Then it hit me. Vector 2033. My name is Lex Vector. The rumors are true. 
Nollywood. That's where I was headed to next. Never heard of Nollywood. It was all new to me. Like everyone else, when I say to an American audience, have you heard of Nollywood? People were like, what? It needed some reform. Kobe was felt felt that I could come in and, and create something that would look visually appealing to a, a more wide audience. But at the time, it was going through a renaissance. There were other filmmakers who also had the same thought and were doing the same thing, who were, who were talented and more so talented. So it was being at the right place at the right time. I got introduced to Chima Movie Empire, and the first Nollywood film we did was Busted Life. Where is my money? Oh, my mother. You see, you got screwed. After Busted Life, there was Paparazzi, Eye in the Dark. Get a taste of what's shaping African cinema. The film later went on to be nominated and won several awards. Changing the whole look of Nollywood movies. Across the globe. A photo of the one secret crime scene. This summer. Red Epic, Red Scarlet. Um, these are some of the camera systems that are the next wave to produce low-budget films with high quality. I'm looking to do sci-fi action films. I'm looking to do action films. I'm looking to do thrillers. Anything that's got really great cinematography, anything that's got a really deep storyline, anything that leaves an impact, I want to be a part of that. Black Magic Tim, award-winning cinematographer, director, editor, and visual effects wizard.